Welcome to another Spruity Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Brian. I'm here at my co-host, Beth. Before we jump into today's podcast, I'm going to have Coach Beth take us through a few announcements. Beth, take it away. Thanks, Brian. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tuesday's podcast. Don't forget, the Spruity Fitness app has been launched, and we are both live on the Apple and Android platforms. The first 50 people to download and create their account, which is free, will be credited with five free classes of your choice and one month of free nutrition coaching, including the Intro to Flexible Nutrition Seminar. So on the app, you can check out some of the awesome virtual dropping classes, such as Butts and Guts, Morning Mobility, SF Rebounding, and SF30, to name just a few. SF30 is offered as one of our all-in-one packages that offers accountability, nutrition coaching, and fitness. SF30 is designed for busy individuals ready to get up, get their workout done, and move on with their day. And since it's virtual, you can access the class from home or the gym. It's a great way to build a new habit or for those looking for more accountability. This is also a great class for the more experienced individual looking to pump out their workout to their max. Everyone works to their own level and ability. This class not only includes the Intro to Flexible seminar, um, it also has the weekly Strength and Struggle seminar with myself, Coach Beth, where we really take a, a deep dive into habits, behaviors, and mental hurdles when it comes to reaching not only our fitness and nutrition goals, but any goals. Um, and you can enroll in the SF30 program or any of the dropping classes right on the Spruity Fitness app. So download the Spruity Fitness app, book your free classes today. And once you enroll, you will receive your confirmation email and one of the trainers will contact you. Another fantastic program that we have launched is the Fit for Life Senior Fitness Program with Coach Megan. Maintaining a consistent fitness routine is important for all ages. Spur Duty Fitness is excited to offer our Fit for Life Senior Fitness Program for adults looking to improve cardiovascular health, increase strength, work on balance, and improve overall well-being. These classes are designed to be low impact to prevent injury, while also increasing muscle strength and energy levels. The best part about this class is that you can take it from the comfort of your own home. No weather or COVID issues to worry about. Classes will run Tuesday and Thursday mornings from 9 to 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Awesome. And today's guest we are super pumped about. She's an acupuncturist, a chiropractor, Stephanie Pollock. Thank you Yay, for joining Steph. us today. Thanks for having me. This is so exciting. <laughs> oh, I'm super pumped to talk to you and then book a session and then come and see you. Like, I am really excited <laughs> today. So. It was awesome. Going. Yeah. Go ahead. It was awesome because I went just, I went last week um, for the first time. Never had acupuncture before Thanks in my life. Thanks for the phone call. Thanks for the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, peace out. I'm doing it. And <laughs> oh, so unique and I can't wait for her to explain you know bits and pieces of it and then if people have questions for me as someone that just tried it if you've never tried it before make sure that you um, put those questions in the comments um, so that Steph can either answer them or I can give you my feedback um, but man you know one thing I have to say to, to Stephanie is when you know when we first got in there I loved the questions that you asked me it was so different because normally when you go in to see a doctor's office, you know, it's all these same questions. And she was like, oh, I'm going to ask you some questions. And I was like, these are like real questions. Like they were, they were just so different than I had expected, but they were, I was, there was just kind of like, I got to see a whole different side of myself when I answered them. So I thought that was pretty neat. But as we get deeper in, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So for the audience, Stephanie, can you give people a little bit of background about yourself? Sure. So um, like you said, I'm a doctor of chiropractic and a licensed acupuncturist. Um, I've been practicing for about seven years now, and I actually uh, became a doctor of chiropractic first and then was working with another doctor in the current location I am now, Seneca Springs Wellness. And that was my first experience with acupuncture was just working in the setting and seeing the patients rave about it and seeing the patient outcomes and how great it made them feel and how much it helped. And I was like, well, I want to do this too. So then I went back for another master's degree in acupuncture and Chinese medicine. 
And now I'm duly licensed in New York State and I offer both. So I'm like a lifelong student and I'd probably keep going if they wouldn't tell me I have too much debt and can't go anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, <laughs> education is so important, it's, you know, to always be, especially in the health and wellness field, um, you know, that continuing education is so important. So absolutely, there's always something more to learn. Absolutely. And you, what interests me, what you just said was Chinese medicine. Can you explain that a bit? So acupuncture is just one branch of Chinese medicine. There are many different branches, even including like movement, like people probably heard of like Qigong or Tai Chi, things like that. You know, I talked about some of the herbal medicine and some of the food related dietary things. That's all makes up Chinese medicine. Acupuncture is really just one branch, even like soft tissue therapies, like the cupping and Gua Sha, which a lot of people know is Graston, or you might see they use like the stainless steel tools. A lot of chiropractors or physical therapists will use it to help with muscle adhesions. That's all one big part of Chinese medicine. So acupuncture is just one small branch of really a whole system of medicine. Oh, wow. I know, it's and deep. <laughs> when you talk about Chinese medicine, what is there a difference between like the Chinese approach to, I guess, an American approach to medicine? And like, is there a difference? Definitely. How we approach it from like a Chinese medicine acupuncture point of view, I'm sure like Beth can understand from all the questions I asked her, we really look at the body as a whole. Whereas Western medicine is very much focused on, you know, you go see your cardiologist for your heart, you go see your endocrinologist for your thyroid. Chinese medicine really looks at what is the one thing you came in for, maybe your complaint, maybe it's headaches, maybe it's digestive issues, but what's going on in the whole body that's causing this symptom to come up and present itself the way it is. So we never just treat really one part of the body with acupuncture. It's always like a total body approach. And we realize a lot of things intertwine more than we even realize, especially acupuncture is probably most well known for treating pain, chronic pain, acute pain. And what we don't realize is when you have chronic pain, there's also a lot of stress and emotional issues that are attached to it. People realize you know, they can't do what they want to do. You know, they're restricted to maybe being more sedentary. And then that causes a lot of stress. You know, people get upset, people get frustrated. And then when you have those things adding in, that causes pain to be worse. We know that when you're under stress and your body is under stress, pain's worse. And then when your pain's worse, your stress and your emotional aspect is worse. And then when that's worse, pain's worse. You kind of get stuck in that cycle. And I love acupuncture and Chinese medicine because it's really one of the things that can help address both the pain itself, but also the mental and emotional impact it's having on the person in total. And I'll tell you, when I was laying there on that table and I had all like, you know, I'm just laying there. And I went in for a little bit of just stress. I went in for stress relief. That's what I wanted to go in for. Uh, a, a centering for myself. And I just, I remember, and I even said to Steph, like, that one side of my body was like really responding. And she was like, oh yeah, that's your chi side. You know, and I was like, wow. Like, I never thought of my body that way before, of, of these other, this new way to look at how my body was functioning. So it was really, uh, it made me feel so in tune to what was going on. Yeah, that's really cool. And as far as acupuncture too, you're working, can you explain what that is for people that don't know? Sure. So acupuncture, um, we use the very fine stainless steel needles and place them on different acupuncture points on the body, which are along different meridians or channels, which we use from an acupuncture point of view. And the whole point of acupuncture is really to balance body systems. So we really believe in like natural healing along with that, but we really look at like the balancing, how Beth talks about like the chi side of her body, like the, the basic principle of acupuncture, which is really digging into a little theory, but you remember that like yin yang symbol or yin yang symbol you heard people yep. So that's really like the whole representation of Chinese medicine. Everything is balanced with yin and yang, where, you know, yin is dark, yang is brightness, yin is considered female, yang is considered male, you know, day and night, up and down, everything has an opposite and an equal. So when you look at that yin yang symbol, you know, you have the light within the dark and then the dark within the light, kind of how the seasons go. You have winter, you have summer. And we think about that in the same way as our body, that everything has to have balance. So you know, where is maybe there too much or an exuberance of something in the body? Or where is something lacking in the body? And we kind of think of it that way and try to, you know, rework energy and rearrange things that way to help balance and then, you know, resolve whatever symptom we're really working with. And what are the pressure points? Because I've had acupuncture done once a long time ago. 
And I felt like when the needle was placed like in my forehead, I don't remember anything after that. So <laughs> I, don't, I was out. Boom. Yeah. You are totally stuck. Right? came back an hour like, later. Like, like, Men like, in black was, experience. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah. what is, what are the pressure points? Or so the, the pressure points are like I said, all in the body. And they're really where there is a collection of, chi and blood in the body. So, I mean, which isn't quite accurate, but the most accurate Western, you know, equation to that would be energy. So it's kind of where those energy collects on different points in the body. And by accessing them, we can either, you know, bring, you know, energy or like, you know, circulation to an area, or we can, you know, move it away from an area, depending on what we're trying to do with the treatment. Yeah, I just remember not remembering anything after that. Well, it sounds like you were really relaxed. So that was, that was good. It was. Now, is there, is there like um, specific points that trigger certain things? Definitely. Like, I mean, the, the theory of acupuncture is so complex. I guess that's why it took three years to learn it. But there's definitely specific points we'll use for, you know, digestive issues or, you know, muscular tendon ligament related issues, you know, vision for headaches. But a lot of it has to do with exactly what it's presenting for you. Like if somebody comes in for me, like for headaches, it isn't like, okay, here's the headache points and I pop them in. It's like, you know, where is your headache? What brings your headache on? What makes it better? What makes it worse? Where in the head do you exactly feel it? And then that kind of directs me to exactly what points I'm going to use to help with that exact kind of headache. It isn't like a one-to-one -one like it is in Western medicine a lot. Like, you know, maybe you have constipation or diarrhea, then it's like, okay, then we dig into more about, you know, what causes it. And, you know, and then we use the digestive points that are fit for that exact pattern. So Brian, it sounds like our, our answer for most nutrition <laughs> questions. Wait, there it isn't depends. one. It's, <laughs> it's an, yeah. It depends. It's yeah, funny. that's right, Steph. There's not one, a one size fits all. No. And I think that's so important for people to realize is that um, something that works for one may not work for another. Our bodies are so unique and so different. Absolutely. And were you always into health and wellness? Like, or is I definitely you always a little background on I think that? I definitely always was, but definitely as I got older, kind of trended more that way. Um, probably as like a young teenager, I went to chiropractic for headaches for myself. So that's something that kind of spurred me to kind of getting interested more into this. And I never really thought of it as a career choice for me. I actually did my undergrad in marketing. So I mean, now I run my own business, so that's helpful. But it definitely took me like a roundabout way to really sit down and think that this was really something that I was passionate about and wanted to pursue. It was for some reason never something I, I thought of, but the older I got, the more I realized like how important it was and you know the difference you could make. And it really made me want to finally, you know, jump on the bandwagon and go to school for more school. <laughs> this was this was almost something that you you looked at as an interest, almost like an interest hobby, but not a profession until you got a little older. That's definitely. how it was me with personal training. It was always yeah. like, oh, this sounds like something cool I'll do on the side. And then it's like, why is this taking up more hours in my normal job? <laughs> and then it was like, well, you know. I enjoyed it too. Absolutely. Because it's a yeah. hobby and it's, you know what I mean? And it's, and it's a job. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's really interesting. So where did you go to school? So I did my chiropractic degree at Duville in Buffalo. And then I did my acupuncture at the Finger Lake School of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. And that was in Seneca Falls, New York. So I was actually practicing as a chiropractor. And then two days a week, I would drive two hours each way to go to acupuncture school. So it was crazy. And I probably put on like 70,000 miles on my car and three years, but, <laughs> but it was so fun. Like I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. I really do love being able to do both treatments and both modalities with my patients. And you said the acupuncture school was three years? Mm-hmm. So was three yeah. years of two hour drives? Yep. Yep. Wow. Three years. Ooh. Three years. In New York State, you have to have a total separate master's degree in acupuncture, whereas some states, if you're a chiropractor, you can take an abbreviated like 200 hour course and become certified. But I mean, you can rest assured that if someone is doing acupuncture on you in New York State, they're very highly trained. Their credentials have to be a master's degree level. Yeah. She was pretty skilled. She made it like walk through like it was nothing. I was like laying there, like waiting. Like I was like, okay, here we go. Here we go. And then she was just talking and I'm like, wait a minute, it's happening. Like I don't even, <laughs> I'm not even really feeling anything. You know, I was like, just didn't know. I just didn't know, but it yeah. was great. Yeah. That's probably the, the most popular question I get asked is does acupuncture hurt? 
And um, no, acupuncture should never be painful or uncomfortable. You can definitely feel sensations. Like you kind of experience Beth, like some of the tingling, maybe people tell me they feel like their body feels really heavy or like they're floating or maybe like achiness or something like that at a specific point, but nothing should ever be sharp, painful, uncomfortable. When you lay and relax for your time, I want you to be 100% comfortable and just totally relaxed and zone out because it's your time. How long does a typical visit last with acupuncture? My typical like initial patient visit's a little bit longer. So about a full hour, we sit down and like ask a bunch of questions. We talk kind of, I explain a little bit to you about what's going to go on. And then a typical visit is usually about 40, 45 minutes after that. And you said that you had your degree in chiropractic first, and then you kind of had a mentor when it came to acupuncture or the facility you were working at, there were acupuncturists and that's what piqued your interest, interest in it? Yeah, that's really exactly how it happened. I kind of did have a mentor with that and with the chiropractic as well. When I was a new grad, like getting into a practice that had a seasoned doc was really helpful to me. Just have somebody to ask questions to and bounce ideas off of. I mean, I think anybody who's new into, you know, their line of work, especially something that requires, you know, a certain skill like we do, it really is helpful. But yeah, that was my first exposure to acupuncture and just hearing the patients talk about it. And I got to be able to experience it myself and, and watch it. And it was sold for me after that. There was no turning back. Yeah. And it's huge to, to have, like, to find a, a good mentor. If you have a good mentor, it makes a huge difference, especially when you're nervous about getting into that field. You Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. And especially even more than even on like the application end, the business end was something that they really don't teach you in a lot of schools and things like that. I'm sure as a trainer, they didn't really teach you a lot about the business of being a trainer. So it was nice to have somebody that <laughs> had gone through it and yeah, help yeah. understand things like that, especially when you're dealing with insurance and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Really tough. <laughs> Yeah, if they would have spent a little less time on like sagittal and frontal plane movements oh and more gosh. on like Facebook marketing, I would have been really <laughs> helpful. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. You know, it's like when you explain, I explain stuff to clients, it's like, I don't think I'm ever going to use that word. How does this work <laughs> over here on Facebook? <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I, I know. No yeah. Even with a marketing degree, nothing, there was no social media and stuff like this when I graduated from my undergrad. So it's, it's so different now. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, you were taking marketing at one time, and I feel like marketing, when it comes to like business owners, has changed so much. Oh, absolutely. I, mean, I remember taking ads out in the Buffalo News for like 60 bucks and getting oh a my gosh. paragraph, hoping somebody would read it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, then and, and like, those types of things are so expensive, too. And social media is free. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, take advantage of it. But yeah, it was nothing that was ever even spoken about in one of my marketing classes. It just really didn't exist at that time. Yeah, it's definitely interesting how much that changed, that changed through the years. Absolutely. And can you tell us a little bit more about your facility? Where sure. it is, so, what you yeah, offer, stuff like that? We're located in West Seneca on Seneca Street. We're near the Southgate Plaza. Most people kind of know that landmark area. I like to refer to our facility as like a wellness collective. So we have a group of eight different practitioners, including myself. Um, there's two other chiropractors, four massage therapists. There's two hypnotists. And then mm -hmm. I have three estheticians that do different types of things. So we offer, you know, Reiki, hypnosis, the acupuncture, chiropractic, massage therapy, all types of aesthetic like spa treatments and facials, body wraps, things like that. Um, I own the facility and I run the facility, but everyone else just has their own businesses and kind of rent space and is an independent contractor. So everybody really wants to be there. Everyone helps each other out. And we're really just focused on always finding what's best for the patient. Whether it be, you know, they come to see me for chiropractic and I think they'd be better with massage therapy, then, you know, we coordinate that or vice versa. So it, it works really well and it's great to communicate about each patient and really just be able to get them the best services for whatever their needs are. That was honestly one of the things that really impressed me the most about your facility was how all in one it is. It is a wellness center for sure like without a doubt, like kudos to you for what you have built and put together there with your team of people, because it's really something to be proud of. Oh, thank you. And we're awesome. really focused on like offering, I don't know, maybe Beth can speak to what you experienced there, but 
really offering, like we definitely are a medical practice. You know, we take insurance, we provide medical services, but I really have focused on building like a warm, calming, welcoming feel. I don't want people to come in and, you know, be nervous, like that white coat syndrome, stuff like that. I really want people to come in and just feel like I'm, I'm relaxed here. I'm comfortable. I can open up to you and, you know, explain what's going on with me and what's, you know, bothering me. And that that's really what I've been focusing on like, turning it into. And I'm, I'm hoping you felt that way when you came in. 100%. When that door opened and the aroma of just the oil, like that, oh, there's just that smell of the massage oils. Like you smell it. It's just, it's instant relaxation. And that door opened and I was like, oh Lord, we are in a good place. And, you know, <laughs> so I kind of walked in and I'm like, I loved all the information that you had provided also. So it was like, there was little brochures and pamphlets like that were, that you could take. So, because many of us know when you go and do something new, um, it's in one ear and out the other because it can, you know, all your senses are being stimulated at that point in time. You're smelling new smells, you're seeing new things, you know, it was the, the sounds that you hear. And then to have to walk out after an experience, you're just like relaxed for 45 minutes. And then you're like, wait, what am I supposed to do? You know, like, what can I do? So it was really great to be like, I took a little bit of information for myself on the way out so that I could look at it again. If I had questions, when I go back to see Stephanie, you know, I could say, hey, I'd like to try something, you know, this, what do you think about that? So I loved that part of it. Um, I was hoping when she told me that it was like, you know, sometimes people feel like this weightless. I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to feel like I'm flying? <laughs> 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 I didn't, but I, it was like, I felt the sensation that like warmth coming over my body as I just kind of laid and everything just started to work and just how in tuned I felt with my body being on the table and really just like I said before you know taking that time to just sit and be focused um so it was it was it was a beautiful facility I was really impressed oh good I'm so happy to hear that and we do have a whole section in our foyer like we love to support other local businesses so we have their cards and their information, pretty much anything anybody wants to, you know, kind of supply or put out for our patients. We're more than happy to, you know, trade favors and help them support their business as well, because that's really what it's all about. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. That's really, really awesome. How often would you I recommend think someone? I need to bring some cards next time. Yeah, <laughs> we will. <laughs> Your information in our foyer too. How often would you recommend somebody um, has acupuncture done? So it's definitely very much based on each person. You know, if they come in with an acute injury or something like that, we're going to want to get a couple of visits kind of close together and kind of wait to see how they respond. So just when someone comes in with something, you know, that has just flared up or acute, I recommend once a week for four weeks. And then we kind of reassess at that point for somebody who's just coming in for like wellness and they just, you know, want to maintain good health and feel good uh, four times a year during the change of seasons is really what I recommend for those types of patients. I love that philosophy, that one change with the change of the seasons. I think that's really a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's easy to make it to remember, but there's also different things like, you know, allergies that come up during that time. You know, a lot of people feel different emotional things with the seasonal, you know, affective disorders and stuff like that. So it's really just the best times to get the most bang for your buck and get the most benefit out of your treatment, I feel like. really really awesome I'm, I'm really i like i want to go there now where are you by the southgate plaza i used to work at the southgate plaza for like eight years we're uh, we're on the same side as pasquale's pizza if you know where that is about yeah. eight years down we're very close <laughs> that's that's where where we know where pasquale's is so you're more down towards um you're on the we're, left hand side yep we're on the same well it depends where you're coming from if you're coming if right if pasquale's yeah. is on my right if you're looking at Pasquale's and it's on your right, we're on the left. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, we're kind of between Union and Ridge. Okay. Okay. I know where you are. So we talked a bit about the acupuncture side of things. Can we yeah. also talk about the chiropractic philosophy? Sure. And how that ties in? Yeah. So everyone's, there's a lot of different philosophies in chiropractic, but um, we definitely practice more of what we'd call like a diversified evidence-based philosophy. So, you know, we do definitely like support natural functioning and healing of the body, but at the same time, we're really focused on movement and biomechanics and, you know, pain is just one aspect. Of course, that's usually what brings people in, but we really try to focus on like, what is your pain preventing you from being able to do that you want to do? A lot of times it's hard for people to gauge 
pain and things like that, whether it's, you know, feeling better, feeling worse, but we really focus on what they're trying to accomplish. So whether that could be, you want to run a marathon or, you know, you just want to be able to sit on the ground and play with your grandkids for 10 minutes. Like we really try to focus on those baby steps and like helping people meet those functional goals, which is easier for people to kind of rate and like understand in their mind. But that's really kind of what we focus on there. And of course, traditional chiropractic. So we're hands-on, you know, adjustment, things like that. Do a lot of, you know, muscle release therapy. We incorporate different modalities like heat, stem, um, some of the soft tissue gua sha stuff, and some of the cupping that Beth experienced, which we didn't talk about, but yeah. maybe, we could talk yeah, about. I've never, know he likes the cupping. I've never had that. You missed done. it, Bri. You missed it. <laughs> Can you explain a bit what the cupping is and what it does? Sure. Yeah, so cupping uses a negative pressure to kind of pull up on the skin to release muscle tension and things like that. So I kind of explain it how, whereas a massage, you know, they give you a positive pressure, they're pushing into the skin. Cupping uses a negative pressure and a suction and kind of pulls out from the skin. So they're both used to release, you know, muscle tension, things like that. People get a different sense of relief from cupping than they do from something like a traditional massage therapy. It's hard, hard to explain, but it's almost like you know, you're pulling out some of that, you know, stagnant energy and that tension and that tissue that's been kind of resting there. It's also really great for helping boost the immune system. We use it a lot over the back of the lung fields for people with like COPD, you know, asthma that have congestion kind of things or getting over some of those things where, um, you know, like COVID, things like that. We've used it a lot for people with residual and like long haul symptoms to help with that. So it helps boost the immunity um, in that way. But yeah, I really use it mostly for, like I said, pain, muscle tension, discomfort, which is kind of why we did a little bit on the lower back for Beth where she was experiencing some discomfort. But most people are really afraid of it. They see the marks on you know, the different athletes, like the Michael Phelps thing was really popular. And of course, the first thing they ask is, oh my God, it's going to hurt and all this and all that. It really doesn't. You definitely feel the, no, suction, the negative pressure, but it's not painful. Really, those marks you see pulled to the surface are really like, that stagnant blood that's been sitting in the tissues and it kind of pulls that to the surface so that fresh oxygenated blood can come in and heal and nourish the tissues. Yeah, I thought the cupping was really unique. Um, you know, I've had massage therapy for many, many years and it is, like you said, it's always that um, that pressure that's that pushing inwards. So having that, that flip and it was just kind of like something completely different, I thought it was really I would probably go more aggressive. I'm like, bruise me up. Like, I'm good. Like, I can handle that. I probably wouldn't fail, you know? But um, it, it was really a neat experience. And you said you also do on top of this. I'm super into recovery. I know, right? I'm I know. super, super into recovery. So I'm like ready to drive over now. Because um, <laughs> that, you know, because I think that's one area where everybody talks about working out. Everybody talks about cardio, but not a lot of people talk about recovery. And that goes everywhere from, sleep, stress management, recovery techniques, all those things, acupuncture, cupping, grass, and all that. And I don't think Nutrition. people realize how big of a role that actually plays in overall health and overall performance. I think Absolutely. we're just really starting to see people talk about it. You Absolutely. know? Yeah, you hit on everything with the stress, the sleep, all that kind of stuff. And uh, that's one of the questions I ask every single patient. Sleep is one of like the first things we dive into because if you're not getting restful sleep and you're not sleeping, your body's not recovering, you're not healing, there's, there's no way around it. Sleep is so, so important. So that is one thing I definitely, you know, ask every single patient and we focus on what one of those things usually we try to focus on from the beginning. Cause like you said, if you're not sleeping or we're over stimulated, stuck in that, you know, sympathetic you know, mm -hmm. nervous system mode all time, like we all are, everyone's in fight or flight, we're always stressed out, we're always running from place to place, that being able to turn that off and get back into that parasympathetic state is so important for long-term recovery. And it's so nice to hear someone else say that besides myself and Brian, because we probably say it how many times a day to, you know, our clients about, okay, you know, like this week, we're really going to focus on that sleep, like even if you get two days more of appropriate amounts of sleep, and I don't think people realize the value behind it. I feel like as a society, as we age, as we get older, it's like this, this rite of this passage where, oh, you're older, you need to stay up later and do, you know, God only knows what until what hours of the night. And then, you know, it's just kind of like, like my teenager, you know, he's like, well, it's only 10 o'clock, I'm not going to go to bed, you know? And I'm like, 
you need to go to sleep. Like I cannot explain to you how important your sleep is. It's so and it's it, it's just a society. It's just go go go. You're up up up, and that's one thing that I you know we try to really work with our clients is really understanding that recovery and how important sleep is. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's easier said than done. Yeah, one hundred percent. So yes. that's what I say is one of the things with acupuncture. You're almost you know you're forced to sit there and relax because you got a bunch of needles stuck in you. So you're not going to get up. <laughs> but not that I will say people have gotten up and grabbed their phones or things like that, which I, I do not recommend, but you definitely just have to be, you know, in your own time, in your own space. And I just, you know, focus on breathing, listen to the music and really just try to keep your mind from yeah. wandering to everything else you have to do and just focus on being here right now. Yeah. And you touched and on honestly, this earlier when you talk about balance. I don't think people tend to balance we almost have this we feel this reward when we're when we say you know i i, I only get four hours of sleep and i'm up working and it's like yeah that's not good <laughs> that's not good no, like i'm up at this time up. it's like well if i don't have to get up at that i'm not getting up at that time you know what i mean no, it's just we pride good. ourselves on like this overworked i'm gonna carry all this stress and i'm gonna get less sleep because i'm gonna show i'm dedicated and it's like that's not good for you mentally or physically if you're not resting now Not at all. I heard something recently when people were kind of feeling tired and stuff, they were kind of getting down on themselves and saying, you know, why am I so lazy? Why do I feel so lazy right now? And like, instead of that, we need to like make that mind shift switch to why is my body telling me I need to rest right now? And like, I'm looking at things, just looking at things differently. Mindset. will change it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. When we talk to clients, we always talk to them about noticing stressors and the, and the, um, the issue, like I know myself, if I don't get enough sleep, then I'm dependent on caffeine. And then my body feels tired. I'm de- I, I drink more caffeine. And then when I drink caffeine, it suppresses my appetite. And then when I'm hungry, I overeat. And then I got to drink coffee to stay awake because now I'm tired. And it's like, maybe what you need is a, a good night's sleep <laughs> because yes. you're depending on outside sources to keep you awake. And if your body's tired, let's go to bed. You know what I mean? <laughs> like stop trying to fight against it. It's your body trying to tell you, we need to rest and recover here. You can't keep feeding us caffeine and think we're just going to live like this for the rest of our life. You have to let us actually. And I think it takes actually like, you know, once clients start working with a professional where they're kind of like, we have to look back at our habits and and find out, well, hey, look what's happening. You know, you've been tracking your sleep for a while. Look what's happening. I see this. We see this pattern. And then it gives them that opportunity to see, learn, and then, you know, make adjustments towards those habits. Because a lot of time that's just what it is. It's just a habit and a behavior uh, that they don't realize they've gotten themselves into. Absolutely. And what recommend, what recommendations um, do you talk to people about when it comes to sleep and getting enough sleep? I think I said, we really just focus on like, listen to your body kind of thing. Um, you know, most people... Most people want to do better and listen to their body. Almost sometimes coming in, like you probably experience with your clients, like the accountability thing, just that we're talking about it out loud, kind of, I think, makes them more invested in it and more invested in wanting to change and do better. So I think that that alone really helps people. But definitely, I really just focus on telling people to listen to your body. That's the number one thing. I know at the end of best first treatment, I usually explain to people, you know, a lot of times people either respond to their first treatment by feeling a little tired, relaxed, and drained. Or alternately, there's some people get a burst of energy. And, you know, that's great too. But I really just tell them, just focus on listening to your body. And if you feel that relaxation, that little drain, you know, take it easy today. You don't have to go do that extra workout, do some gentle stretching, you know, do some relaxation stuff. And if you do alternately get that burst of energy and you want to do a little extra, you know, as long as you feel good, that's fine. Take advantage of it. Yeah, I agree. We have clients track uh, sleep and stress as well. One being the least amount, five being the most, because you know how it is with hormones and things like that. If they're out of whack, you know, and you're not losing weight, it's not a caloric issue. It's a rest and recovery issue. Mm -hmm. So if we don't look at that, you can, you can add more cardio in, you can keep deducting calories. You're still not going to see the loss you think you're going to see until you get your, I, I, we call it our rest and recovery section. until you work on your rest and recovery, managing stress, talking to people about non-food related de-stressors and, and a, a nighttime sleep routine. I think everybody Which should we I, talk about a lot. Yeah, my wife calls me like the fifth golden girl. I have the best nighttime, like <laughs> bedtime routine. Like my, I'm, I tell my kids, I'm like it's eight thirty. I'm going upstairs. Don't bother me. I know. <laughs> Peace out. Bye, everybody. Come up now because I'm going to bed. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, 
but you have to do that. You, 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 do. you have to do that because I know, you know, I've talked about this before. I know if I don't do that, then it's usually I'm snacking late at night. I'm like up watching something ridiculous on TLC. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know it's midnight. You know what I mean? It's like seven episodes of 90 day fiance. And then I can't fall asleep and I got to be up early the next day. And you know what I mean? So it's definitely trying to stick to a nighttime routine the best you can to help. Yeah. Sleep. Then you get into, you know, like to the TV, the phones, the computer and all that stuff overstimulating at night. I'm sure mm -hmm. you talked to your yeah. clients about like having Absolutely. that time where you, you know, shut everything down and really just, you know, read a book or just focus on, you know, not having all that overstimulation from all the electronics that we can't get away from these days. Absolutely. And it's very hard to pull. That's probably one of the hardest thing, things mm -hmm. it is to pull people away from it, is the electronics at night. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And we chatted a little bit off camera about mm -hmm. food and Chinese. Yeah. I, can you talk about that? was super yeah. interesting. And then we're like, Wait, I know, we were like, like Yes, a whole other branch of the Chinese medicine is really the Eastern dietary therapy. So you know, I'm sure you know there's like different foods, stuff with like Ayurvedic medicine or, you know, things like that. Same thing with Chinese medicine. So we look at people's kind of, we would call their constitution and the pattern that they present with, and we would make different food recommendations based on what we see. So like if somebody would have a constitution where they present with a lot of heat symptoms, so it'd be like acid reflux, maybe they get like red itchy eyes or like flushing in the face or skin rashing or things like that that are presented as heat, you know, we would recommend cooling foods for them. Like mint would be considered a cooling food in Chinese medicine or watermelon is actually a very cooling fruit, which is why we all eat it in the summer when it's hot out. Vice versa, if someone had a lot of cold in their system or maybe they felt cold all the time, they could never get warm or, you know, their joints ache with the cold weather, which you see is like arthritis and, you know, Western medicine, we'd recommend more warming foods for them, like cinnamon and ginger and things like that, that are very, you know, warming on the body. So we look at, you look at food as medicine definitely in that way too. And even eating seasonally, like I said, you know, in the summer, we'd recommend those cooling foods, like the fruits and the watermelon. And then when you get into winter, you really want more of the warming, nurturing foods, like the hot soups and the stews and the things that are really easy to digest and just very comforting. So neat. That is, I know, I could literally, I want to know Which more. is funny because <laughs> I'm a cold I person. Know more like, more, so cool. I feel like I'm a cold person. Well, if I'm cold during the day and then I'm hot at night, so I don't know what's wrong with me. But um, I love like cinnamon and ginger. Oh, I can put cinnamon and ginger in literally everything. And maybe that's why. Maybe that maybe I crave it and I don't even really realize it. Yeah. So a lot of times you will crave or like be averse to foods that really don't fit for your constitution. Hmm. Even like I'm sure you do a lot of like the shakes, even like the cold shakes and smoothies and things like that. In the winter, for somebody who has a lot of cold in their system it can be really hard for them to digest and really taxing on the system as well. Which is so oh. funny because that cold weather makes me want to bake and have warm yeah. things. And eat it's soup so and have neat. tea, hot tea and coffee under a blanket. Yes, that's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Would you say the, the you. Chinese medicine approach is more preventative? Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely used more of as a preventative type of medicine. You're really just kind of working with you know, what's presenting in your body, but we do see, you know, people a lot for like acute type things. I'm sure, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people don't, you know, go for preventative medicine it usually has to be something that sparks them to, you know, eventually invest in their health and like get into those types of routines. So yeah. usually now, like my preventative wellness patients are ones that have come in at one point for some type of specific ailment and have kind of transitioned to becoming more, you know, wellness-based patients, which is fantastic. But typically it takes something to bring them in, you know, first off, but definitely preventative is in, you know, managing the stress, you know, helping with the sleep yeah. cycles, helping to, you know, make your healthy digestion. I'm sure that's super important too, when you're dealing with clients and thinking about weight loss and stuff, you know, if your digestion isn't working optimally, you're not going to lose weight either. Like we talk a lot about, you know, TMI stuff, you know, like, you know, poop in China. Oh yeah. Every, every day. day. That's our yeah, conversations every day. Yeah. It's like texting every day. Hey, did you go yet? Did you go? Yeah. Oh, great. Exactly. Twice? And everyone, yeah, <laughs> everyone's like embarrassed by it. No one wants to talk about no. it. It's so important because you don't know like how many people are constipated. They're like, yes. oh yeah, go once every four days. That's, that's, I know. That's not normal. <laughs> No, your, your body is not, you wonder why you can't lose weight because nothing's moving through the system. Yeah. You know, we gotta, we gotta change that. I always tell clients, yeah. no TMI. There's no TMI. There's no TMI. There's an <laughs> yeah. Tell me everything. 
seriously <laughs> tell me everything it takes like a good like week or two and then all of a sudden it's like once that conversations happen then it's like all right no hold bar now here we go <laughs> yeah but you have to know those things those are things that i think yeah. people aren't used to another thing i want to touch on is stress but those are things that people aren't used to opening up about because they don't think it makes a difference they just hear go hard every day train hard and then that's it and now you're starting to see athletes and I see this with a lot of like, um, especially guys in strongman, and you've seen a lot of like NFL players talk about working with people on stress management, working with professionals on stress management and how, how to st stay out of that sympathetic state and help with recovery and stuff like that. So I think it's, like I said, I really think we're just starting to dip our toes now and how important that rest and recovery and the activities you can take part in that will help manage those, um, which is really, really big. This is really big. Absolutely. That is so awesome. Can you give everybody your address again so they know where you are and how to contact you? Yeah, we're located at 3648 Seneca Street in West Seneca. Our website is SenecaSpringsWellness.com. You can email me directly right through that website there. If you submit an inquiry, it goes right to my email. And I'm very responsive with my email. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and send them right through there. Uh, my Instagram is Dr. Steph Pollock, and you can DM there. Same thing. I'm very responsive to asking questions. I love talking about acupuncture, Chinese medicine, chiropractic, food, anything natural health. So <laughs> don't be shy. Yeah, you have some great Instagram not just talking, content too. There's we're not just talking like, um, like food. we mean all food, right? Like we can talk about that too. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I'll link everything up too. Um, did you, I want to, did you have, do you have a sports background? Did you play no, sports? No, not at all. Really? I actually, I mean, I danced when I was younger. I didn't play a sport in high school or college. Um, I've always enjoyed like fitness and activity. I like running. I love to be out in nature. I'm an amateur bird watcher. So that gets me some exercise walking around. Okay. But um, yeah, I've never, I took up volleyball as a hobby after I after I graduated so I played some you know outdoor rec volleyball which is super fun so you get your exercise and then drink your beer and have your chicken wings so it's all about balance <laughs> absolutely it's all um, about balance absolutely that's what we talk to people about nutrition and they're like oh I, I'm gonna go and eat all I can because I'm starting my diet I'm like well we don't really give you a diet like you can still have that like you don't have to go to <laughs> Eileen's bakery and get an almond ring because you're starting to die. like it's not how it really works it's balance man it's balance <laughs> so are you originally from this area yep i grew up in chictawaga and lived in west seneca with my husband and uh, now we live in east aurora my husband and my three okay. rescue animals my two dogs and my cat so we're the what other names charlie bananas macy and layla are my animals <laughs> and, uh, they all are very special and dysfunctional rescues so it's like the land oh. of the toys at my house <laughs> but, i love it myself. Beagle, beagle pit mix named Tyson. Oh, my beagle, my Macy's my beagle. Yeah, it's in, not a protective dog at all. The dog, like somebody oh. comes to the door, he barks, and then he runs all oh, the other way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, somebody's here. You get, you handle it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great dog though. Great dog. I am. I would. I love dogs, and my wife wants to get another dog. I'm on the fence about getting another dog because if I get it's one more, I'm gonna get five. Like I'll get. Like I want them all. Like, I want the seven dwarfs of dogs. Like, I just want seven running around the house. <laughs> but then, I, know I don't know. I do. Right? I if I, I win the lotto, I would open an animal sanctuary and just adopt every misfit oh. animal that needs a home. And oh. that's, what I, that's what I would do. Then probably still do acupuncture and chiropractic on the side, you know, for free. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not deal we with any paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went to the Lancaster yeah. um, dog park that just opened up. And this was a while back. And there was this dog. He, I don't even know what. He had to be the, like 90 pounds. Humongous. Like I went up to him and he just almost knocked me over and licked me. And my wife's like, no way. That dog's like 90 <laughs> pounds. And I'm like, and then um, the woman that was fostering him, she said, he does get a little lazy. And I'm like walking around with him and stuff. And I bring him back. And he had he walked over to the grass and just sat there. And she's like, come on. His name was Eggert. She's like, come on, Eggert. Get out of the grass. And he's just like... Yeah, she had to nope. go pick him up and move him. Not I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. like, yeah, no way. Those big dogs, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <love> big dogs. <laughs> no way. He would. I'm like, that's reminds me of just like a football watching dog. Like Sundays, he's just sitting on the couch. 
sharing food. <laughs> like we're just watching football all day. I love animals. Me too. So you're from this area. Can you give us your top three favorite places to eat? Ooh, that's a tough mm. one. Um, hmm, let me say that. See, it depends what I want to eat. My favorite restaurant actually closed during COVID. So that was a really big thing. Oh. I used to love the Blue Lantern up oh. on Seneca Street. Yeah. Seafood, great steak. Um, we frequent the Barbell out here in East Aurora. Yeah. Like my chicken wings. Um, yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, we don't. You Not don't a get chicken food. wing girl. What's wrong with me? You like to cook? I love chicken I wings too. Cook. But Beth doesn't call chicken wings chicken wings. And ever since she did that, it I, I have a hard time with them. What do you call them? <laughs> They're deep fried chicken flesh. Like it's yeah, so just like the, when you say it, it like that. Much meat on them. It's just like crispy skin yeah. with sauce. Like I just yeah. can't. That yeah. sounds delicious. I love the way they smell, but I'm not a fan. Oh. I'm not. I don't know how I'm for Buffalo. Like I don't. Yeah. Is that your favorite place for wings? Is Barbara? Like my husband's favorite. I like Marvel's wings, but my favorite place for wings, I have to say this or else I'm going to end up divorced, is my husband owns a bar, Holiday Sports Bar, in <laughs> volleyball in West Seneca. So okay. it does, really has fantastic wings, and the Carolina Gold Wings are my absolute favorite. So cool. I highly recommend. See, it sounds good. What are those? What, how, is that the way they're made, like the flavor? It's like the sauce. Yeah, it's like a Carolina barbecue sauce. It's I can't even describe it. It's like a honey mustard, but it's barbecue. But Ooh. I don't know. They're just fantastic. And they're crispy, and they're my favorite. I could probably do a chicken I thing. Do, like, I like barbell wings, too. <laughs> so on our way of dropping off cards, we'll head to your husband's place and grab wings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, like it's yeah. Like, it's volleyball, you get your exercise, and then right. you, you know have your wings and your beer, and you balance it out. <laughs> it's all about balance. <laughs> yes, it is. That is so, so awesome. Oh, wow. I, I really want to pop in and see you. I, yeah. I just think... I wanted to do this whole series of visiting places and getting recovery work done and just taking a little video and putting it out and interviewing the owners and just giving, because again, I think a lot of people hear about like cupping, like I have friends that are like, yeah, I just don't know where to get it done. And it's like, well, there's places to get it done. I just don't think people know where to go sometimes. Yeah, no, yeah. I think right. that's right. And even a lot of massage therapists now are incorporating it into their, you know, treatments and things like that. But with the Chinese medicine, the acupuncture, we still do the traditional like glass cupping where we use the glass cup with the fire to kind of suck really? the oxygen out. So yeah, it's a total different kind of feeling and different kind of technique, but yeah. there's lots of different, you know, cupping styles. Oh, that's really cool. Now I really want to do it. Because because uh, if it's if it's not the glass, then it's just the suction cups, right? Like not say suction cups, but right, yeah, either like the silicone cups that have the suction, cups, the ones the plastic ones that have the little gun that does the suction. But yeah, the glass yeah. cups with kind of the fire are kind of a whole little little show and totally different. Yeah. So wait, you got it? Can you explain yeah. that? So how does that work? You're putting the glass on their back and then. So yeah, let me see. Well, have... first, like the circus performers yeah. came in and. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the ring of fire. Right. It was deep. I, I didn't get to see it, though, because it was so, me, not so, my blood. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> but I don't think I have any kind of a lighter or lighting tool here. All right, light this up. But so you use a cup like this, a glass cup. Awesome. And then we would light the cotton on fire here. And then the fire actually takes the, socks, the oxygen out of the cup to create the suction. So you would fire up and then stick to whatever body part. And that's what causes. And then these are nice because they're actually pliable. You can move them around on the back, on the neck, on the skin. So it actually feels really like a like a deep tissue massage as you kind of move them around. And the glass moves really smoothly and freely. Oh, that's really cool. That's so cool. Wow. One other question too I have for you before we wrap up. Can you also explain Graston? Sure. So Graston is actually a takeoff of Gua Sha, which was a traditional Chinese medicine technique using a soup spoon. But now most Graston uses like a stainless steel metal tool. You'll see that it has like a beveled edge and kind of same idea to accomplish some of the stuff the cupping does. You know, you'll use it along the skin to break up areas of muscular tension, of adhesions. We use it a lot in like post-surgical to help break up like scar tissue and things like that that have formed around an area where there might have been a surgical procedure formed. Um, same thing you can use it to kind of promote circulation and lymphatic flow from areas that might be like congested or you have some swelling, you can definitely use it to kind of help in that area too. That's so cool. It, it just sounds like you offer so much at your facility. Yeah. And it really is like, like a one-stop shop. 
Yeah, we really, we try to, you know, offer as much as we can. And I can say everyone there really pours their heart into what they do and really loves what they do. And I think, I think it shows. And I think people feel it when they come in patients, you know, really feel like they're heard and, you know, they're not a number there in a big medical practice. Really, when you come in, like it's your, it's your time and, you know, we're there to help you. Wow. That's really awesome. So you guys do acupuncture, chiropractic, hip massage. Yeah, massage, massage. Hip hypnosis, Reiki, Reiki, reflexology. Oh, I feel like <laughs> can you explain? Reiki? I gotta go back. I gotta do more. <laughs> we gotta do another can one. Can you explain Reiki for people that don't know? I don't know a ton about Reiki. It isn't something I practice. It's okay. something other people, but it is definitely a form of energy medicine, kind of like also right? another form of energy medicine. But they definitely use, you know, different techniques to help clear different blockages um, in that way. We also even offer one of our um, practitioners is a Reiki master instructor. So we often do Reiki training. So if anybody is interested in learning Reiki, we do train and we do have classes for Reiki 1 and Reiki 2 that kind of happen occasionally. Um, yeah, so that's just another thing. We offer a couple different classes and a handful of things. I do an event. It's usually the last Friday of every month, we do an event with a yoga instructor and a sound bowl healer, and we do acupuncture, restorative yoga, and sound healing out at Studio B in West Seneca. So everyone gets, you know, kind of mixed in with the restorative yoga, which is just laying and, you know, relaxed, sustained stretching and fully supported poses. And they get a little acupuncture. And while they're resting with that, they play the, the Tibetan sound bowls that kind of create different vibrational frequencies to help enhance healing. So that's a really popular event that a lot of my patients and a lot of people locally have grown to come to every month because it's just so relaxing. You just go home and you could sleep for two weeks. It's, it's just incredible. <laughs> that's so awesome. I have so many things on my list. That is, thank yeah, you so much for joining us today. I mean, this was so, inf I feel like we could talk forever because I have like so many more questions, but some of, them, some of it might be TMI for the viewers. So I'll pop in and talk to you about it. <laughs> All right, we'll talk <laughs> we'll after. Talk in private, but. <laughs> That's great. And I will uh, link up all the information um, that you have right on the, uh, uh, in the, in the YouTube link section. So as far as like getting to your website, I can put all that stuff in there so people can get a hold of you to make it easier for people to get a hold of you. Yeah, thank you. That'd be fantastic. And if you want to give out just your social media one more time, so if people do want to get a hold of you through social media, they can? Sure, we're at Seneca Springs Wellness on Facebook, and I am at Dr. Steph Pollock on Instagram. Awesome. And I'd like to thank you again for joining us today. I hope everybody enjoyed it. If anybody has questions, feel free to comment or get a hold of Stephanie from the information she put out. I know I'll be going there very soon. I'm super pumped about it. <laughs> I'm super pumped. Yeah. And um, <laughs> for myself, Stephanie, and Beth, we will catch you guys next podcast. And thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Thanks.